Well, the time has come for me to retire my little craft caddy that I made in the shape of a castle because it's getting knocked about too much. My little bits keep falling off and it just doesn't hold enough. So what I thought I'd do is make a new one, different style, using these tin cans and this old shortbread tin that we got. And it's going to be really easy to upcycle these. Firstly, I need to clean them all up, get rid of all the paper, because I don't want butcher's dog food on there, my little puppers get. And then soup. Look at that soup. Royal game, I'll push by. <laughs> First thing I need to do is remove this sharp lip off the can. And I just use my Dremel with the like angle grind a bit on it. And I go round like that and it takes it all off really nice and smooth. And makes it much easier to use. So now they're all nice and smooth. I'm going to stick them in this water. That will wash out the insides where the metal fragments are and also help me remove any glue that's left on them put them to one side and while they're doing that all i'm going to do is go around this tin and the next stage doesn't take long just roughing it up really and now that's all the wrapped up i'm going to add a layer of acrylic paint around this and the acrylic paint will actually really help for the adhesion of the next stage it's nothing more than that is to help me key the next stage onto this and that's why i rubbed it down as well because this acrylic paint will stick onto here really well i shall also do exactly the same with the tin cans once i've cleared all this glue off them i will give them a coat of paint in exactly the same way i need that paint on there to be completely 100 percent dry before I do the next stage. And I don't want to have to wait overnight. So what I'm going to use is this. My mug turning cura. It cures resin mugs. I use it for so many different things now. All I'm going to do is pop that in there. I've cut myself a bit of board. Now put that on the front. Push start. And that will dry that in about 15 minutes. Rather than have to wait 2 or 3 hours. It's brilliant. Honestly, I will link it in the description below if anybody wants to get hold of one. I'm not sure if they're available in the UK yet. I ordered mine from my Amazon America, but they might be available in the UK, but I will link them. Well, they've all been in there now for 15 minutes, so I can turn that off. It will run for a few more minutes on a cooling setting. They're not hot, but they're warm, and look at that. Lovely and dry. It saved me so much time. So what I'm going to do is put my glue on there like that. Take my piece of paper, scrunch it up, and I found this works much easier, and then put that on there like so, because I want a texture on here. And then all I do is I paste that down. So it's nice and saturated. There's not enough texture in some place. You can always add another little bit of paper. This has been drying in the machine for about three quarters of an hour now. So I'm ready to sort out this base. Now I was going to trim these bits up, but what I've actually decided to do is fold these over and then put a cardboard base underneath and that'll just give it a little bit more stability all i'm going to be using is an amazon box now to get these to fold over really easily i'm just going to give them a quick spray with some water let that soak in for a couple of seconds and then where they've dried and they've got stiff they should just fold over and then paint some of my stuff on here and fold that over and where they're not folding over very well or there's not enough to fold over, all I'm going to do is just add a bit more all the way around so that I know everywhere is covered in case I'm not very accurate in cutting the base. Glue it to the sides and to the base and then stick it in the machine for another half an hour. It shouldn't take long this flat bit to dry. Well, this is dry enough now to cut out the bottom bit and then I can stick that on, stick it in the dryer for a couple of hours and then it's ready for me to do the rest of it with. I can't wait to get this finished. It's going to make such a big difference. And all I'm going to do to do this is draw around here like that and then go in probably about that bar where i've just drawn get my ruler and then go along and cut it out and then all i need to do now i've cut it out is cut round my little circle ends and that should fit in there really well and it does look and then to stick that down i'm going to be using some neat white glue Spread that all over i don't need it too thick only a little bit on there and it doesn't matter if it oozes out the sides get my brush Give that a wipe over so it's everywhere. Making sure I get all the corners and all the edges through the middle. Put that on where I want it. Oh, that's neatened it up lovely. Now, all I'm going to do is put a couple of weights on it and let that dry and that'll stick on there beautifully. And I'll leave that for about an hour. It only took about two hours in the little curing machine. And I've also sprayed some gloss spray paint in here because that's a little bit more harder wearing than 
acrylic paints, although it will be fine on the outside. I've decided I want to do these all oranges and reds and yellows because I like those colours, they're nice and bright. And I am going to put some texture on these. Now this will dry really, really quickly anyway. I'm going to put a dark red on there to start with. And as I haven't got a dark red, I'm hoping that adding just a tiny bit of black is going to make it a dark red. Yeah, that is kind of a dark red. I want it to be a little bit runny to start with. That has made quite a nice dark red. Now all I'm going to do is cover the pot all the way over, including the base, with a coat of this, making sure I cover everything. I'm not going inside, obviously, because I've got the black in there. And then once that's covered, I'll just pop that in my little machine to dry that. I'll be dry in 15 minutes or less, ready to do the next coat. There we go. And you can see the texture now. And it doesn't look so much like a can because you can't see those ribs. I'm going to do all of them like that. And then I'll come back. But these are all nice and dry now. And they didn't take long to dry. And what I'm going to do now is really quite heavily dry brush them with a bright red because I don't want too much of this dark showing through. It's just really the underlayer. Give some shadow and that sort of effect. Now you can see you've got a lot of red on there, but you've still got some of that darker color as well. These have had two coats now of a red dry brush and that is coming out really nice. And what I'm gonna do now is mix some red and yellow and make an orange and do another coat. And that should stand out even more. Once I've done that, I'll then do one with just yellow and then maybe a little bit of white. And I'll show you what they all look like when they're finished being dry brushed. I've finished painting this now and I've also given it one coat of a satin varnish because that way it will be a lot more robust. And all I need to do is put it together and I'm going to put one in each of the corners. Before I do that, I'm going to put a little mark on here on each of the pots roughly where I want the glue to go. And then all I'm doing is running a bead of hot glue down that bit there, on that bit there, and some on the bottom, and then gluing that in, pushing it in to where I've got that. That will stick in there really, really well, and I'll carry on and do the rest, and then fill it up. Well, I'm really pleased with how this has come out. I hope you like it too. It has got loads of space in it now. I can keep my staplers, my small ruler, odds and sods, knives, pencils and pens, and I can get to them easily, and if I want to, I can carry them around wherever I'm working. And that's going to sit right there, so it's close at hand for me to use whenever I need to get hold of anything, and I'm going to move it around. What a great way to use your old tins up so it makes it a nice looking and very practical great upcycle let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below or what sort of projects you've made upcycling old tins i will link everything that i've used in the description below be sure to check out the video that's coming up now it's another tin upcycle one on some of the other things i make take care enjoy your crafting bye